So I uploaded a video just yesterday talking about the brand new Vanguard Zombies map, which is of course called the Archon, and I talked about my first impressions, gave a little tiny review, but I also said in the video that I wasn't able to get boss fight footage because my footage of the boss fight of me doing the whole Easter egg was corrupted, so I could only use other footage, but... I did replay the easter egg and I actually got good footage of the boss fight and I wanted to talk specifically about just the boss fight today because I'll be honest, this map's not that good. It's not. There's really nothing special about it other than the easter egg and to me the easter egg is like the most important thing to a zombies map. I know that's not the case for everyone. I know a lot of people like zombies maps for different reasons. You have, in my opinion, I think zombies players kind of split up into three different categories. Generally speaking, obviously it's not going to be 100% for everyone if some people might fit into more than one some people might fit into a se completely separate one i don't know but i think generally speaking you have the easter egg players who are really only concerned with the main quest or that's one of their main concerns and they like speed running or they don't have to like speed running but that could be something i like to do or they just like to complete it a bunch of times because doing some sort of a quest in a zombies map is really fun to them then there's the story people who enjoy the easter egg for the story but then they never really want to do it again because they got the whole story part of the easter egg already they already are aware of it they like the intel they like the lore they like going in depth with all this stuff that that's a whole separate category and then the third category is the high round players who just kind of like to play to get to the highest round possible i would also consider most casual players to be in this category because that is their main goal is they just want to play until they get to the highest round they think they can get to or a lot of people just play till they get bored and then they just stop playing or they like to just level up their guns or whatever that may be but in general they only really care for the survival aspect of the game and I think that people who are more interested in the easter egg aspect of the game they really like having a quest to do and they like a good challenging quest that's not too tedious with a solid boss fight to conclude it I think those people are going to at least enjoy this map and at least for me because I fit in that category I do enjoy this map like I said the map itself it's not that great but when you just look at the easter egg and the, the boss fight it's pretty solid the easter egg itself i'll talk about way more in my full review coming probably within the next few days or maybe in a week or two i'm not too sure it's okay it's an okay easter egg but the main the main boss fight at the very end is incredible okay i really really love this boss fight is it the best of all time of course not it's not better than mephistopheles it's not better than the rise and keeper boss fight i don't think it's better than a couple bo4 easter eggs boss fights it's not the best obviously but it's still really damn good honestly the first time i did this with my crew on my live stream if you want to see my first time completing it go check out the live stream on my channel of my first time playing the map we did complete the easter egg on our first run but we're also decent zombie players i don't think everyone's going to be able to do that but i'll admit that boss fight felt like it was one of the hardest things in zombies like in a long time when we first did it only because we didn't know what we were doing but after knowing how to beat the boss fight and playing it in solo a couple times now it's really not that hard. It's not challenging at all. It's not even close to the challenge of Mephistopheles. I wouldn't say it's even in the top 10 hardest boss fights. It's not that hard, but it's really fun and it's kind of long. Like it's a good 10 to 15 minutes long to complete it. And that's a really solid length for a boss fight in my opinion. I think once you get past like the 20 minute mark, it starts to feel a little bit too long, but like 10 to 15 is perfect. I can't stand those really quick boss fights that you have in, in the past, like for example, Firebase Z's boss fight, you can literally complete in less than a minute. Not a fan of that, not a fan at all. I want a boss fight that takes some time, has stages to it, has different ways of beating it, like it's not like the same strat is always gonna work every single time. You might wanna switch up the strat to try to make it even faster. There isn't just only one gun that's like the most needed gun for this boss fight. You don't have to use the wonder weapons. I'd actually say the wonder weapons are not that great in this boss fight. You kind of want to use like an LMG, an AR. A lot of shotguns are actually kind of viable, which I didn't think they would be because you're shooting someone from a distance. But a lot of the times when you're doing the attacks to him, he actually comes a little bit closer to the screen. So you can get kind of close to him. So a shotgun's not a terrible option to use for this boss fight. The boss fight itself is split up into three different stages. The first stage being the easiest and the last two getting kind of harder as they go along. I would say they're not that much different than one another, but they do have some small differences. The first stage is pretty simple. You literally just have to shoot at the little helmet on the Archon himself. You just have to kind of keep shooting it as much as you can. And he's not always like able to be injured. There's some points where you can't actually deal damage to him, but for the most part, you will be able to just keep shooting him. 
He'll do a couple different attacks, and a lot of them could be very deadly, but some of them aren't that bad. And every now and then he spawns in zombies, and also the boomer zombies. I'm not too sure what the exact name are of them, but the ones that explode. He just spawns in those guys. It's not too bad. There's the plants around the area. They can injure you as well, but you don't really have to do anything with them. You just keep shooting him until you do about a third of his damage, and then you move on to the second area. And this area is a little more challenging because he has a shield, and you have to destroy the shield by using these corrupted crystals, and you get them from shooting the red crystals on the floor it drops a little crystal shard you have to throw the crystal shard in the mouth of one of the plants and the plant will shoot it back out and make the corrupted crystal shard and you have to throw it at one of the rocks that's floating around the area the rock will smash into the little wall thingy behind him and destroy his shield and then you can start shooting his eyes and dealing as much damage as you can you have to keep doing this again and again and again and it's a little bit difficult sometimes especially your first time doing it because the plants can get destroyed by his attacks, so you can be trying to make a corrupted crystal shard, and it can just get destroyed by one of his attacks, and you have to redo it, but you can do it kind of quickly, so it's really not that bad. And then you go, go on to the third area, and the third area is definitely the hardest because it's the same as the second area, but now he also can regen his health. So if you're not doing it fast enough, he will start regaining his health and you could literally be in here forever, which I really like that aspect. I think punishing you for taking too long is great. I'm not a big fan of when it's a timed boss fight, like for example, Legion in Outbreak. I'm not a big fan of that being timed. It's kind of just, it adds a lot of stress to it, sure, but it's also just kind of annoying being timed for it. But I do like when it still punishes you just in a different way for taking too long. And I think the punishment is making the boss fight longer is a kind of an interesting punishment because of course for speedrunners that's going to be very important for speedrunners to keep in mind the fact that if they don't take as you know they don't go as fast as they can it's going to take even longer the only time you get any boss zombies other than the boomer zombies and the regular zombies is in the third stage when you do get the guys with the machine guns you i think you get like one or two of them depending on how long it takes for you to be in there and they're pretty easy to take out if you have decent weapons but that's it there's none of the zabala boss zombies which are incredibly frustrating bosses to go against which i'm very happy they're not here not because i don't enjoy them in other aspects of the game i didn't like them before but they actually have updated them a bit so now they're not nearly as tedious to fight against they're actually kind of balanced now and i, I enjoy their inclusion in vanguard zombies but it's nice to not see them in the boss fight, so I don't know. I really enjoy this boss fight. I think it's really solid, and I think people who are shitting on the entire boss fight, and even the entire Easter egg, just because it's a part of Vanguard Zombies, is a bit ridiculous. If you have valid criticism against the boss fight, that's fair, but saying it's shit just because it's part of Vanguard is just not really fair at all to the developers who probably put a ton of time into this boss fight. You can tell they did. This boss fight is really, really damn well thought out. It doesn't have like a million different things to it, like something like Mephistopheles does, where there's like a bunch of different types of attacks that Mephistopheles has. There's only like a few attacks he has really, but there's a lot of different animations in, in place there. You can tell they took a while on working on the animations and such in this boss fight. The arena obviously was just reused from Terra Maldicta, just like the whole map is reused from Terra Maldicta, but it's a really cool location. So I'm okay with it being used again in a boss fight way because it is a really damn good location to fight in and I really do have a fun time in this boss fight. Let me know your guys' thoughts on the boss fight from this brand new Call of Duty Zombies map in the comment section below. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.